what's going on and welcome back this is another patreon video furthering the conversation that we were having over on the second channel a different perspective the video in question i will have that played throughout the rest of this video towards the end and that video was on why some men or most men are afraid of women now I'm gonna dive into something if you were listening to the last video towards the end I mentioned that there's something that goes unsaid unspoken about that both men and women need to understand in regards to this whole dynamic when it comes to a lot of men being afraid of a lot of women or just women in general like I said I spoke about that in the video and I said I was gonna further that conversation right over here on patreon so that's what we're about to do right now also, I will be implementing some of my own personal experiences when it comes to this. So get ready. Let's dive in. We're going to be here a little while. Not too long, but a little while. This is one thing that I don't hear people talking about very often, and that is the fact that a lot of young boys and the young men were raised by single mothers without a whole lot of male influence. A lot of boys, especially in Western society, are born and brought up without male role models, without father figures of any sort, including myself. I didn't have a single male role model until I was 19 years old. And that male role model, I remember his name, it was Chester Henry. He just so happened to be like one of my supervisors at a job that I worked at. And he just kind of saw a lack of male role model or father figure influence in my life because of how I carried myself, because of how I spoke to people. So he decided to take me under his wing. And it was a very beneficial time in my life to be able to get that type of information from someone much older than me. He was in his 60s, early 60s. I was 19 years old. So that was much needed. And I was seeking that and didn't know where to get it from. So here I was, someone that had gone and grown up, got all the way to the age of 19 without having any male role models any father figures in my life whatsoever and unfortunately a lot of young men a lot of young boys are growing up with the same sort of dilemma now for the important key thing that i wanted to speak on that i feel most men and women don't understand when it comes to this dynamic of a boy and a girl being raised and brought up without a positive male role model or father figure in their life is this let's start with boys and we're gonna really pretty much keep it there for the most part because this is why men are afraid of women for a lot of young boys who are raised by their mother who is their mother to them their mother is the authority figure in their life when it comes to telling this child what to do what not to do um, who to fear who to obey at all times if it's only the mother that's in their life then what you will see happening is that boy, that young boy bowing down to that person and viewing them as this person of power. So what ends up happening is a lot of boys will look to women as being above them because that's exactly what I did. My mother was this powerful figure in my life. If I screwed up, I had to come to her. I was afraid of my mother. I was terrified of my mother because my mother was a strong woman strong independent woman so like a lot of boys i fear doing anything wrong because i didn't want to have to answer to my mother and my mother had to put on somewhat of a masculine role because she had to be both mother and father to me now that's also something i will go a little bit further into how that is not a good healthy mindset for a woman to try to adapt being both parents in this child's life so going back to what I was saying, when a young boy is growing up and all he really has to go off of is what his mom is telling him to do, the actions that he sees his mom taking, because I always tell people, I'm like, your kids go off of what you do more so than what you say. They follow your actions. So also with that, you will see what we consider a lot of men nowadays being beta or simps. And a lot of that has to do with how they were brought up, especially if they were brought up by a single mother. Because what a woman will teach a boy will be far different than what a man will teach a boy most of the time. Usually how it is is a woman will teach a boy to be the man that she knows society would want him to be. Respectful, kind, considerate, and a provider to a woman, right? But... A lot of times what ends up happening is 
women will look at their young boy and say, hey, you know what? I'm going to teach him how to not be like his father, or I'm going to teach him how to not do any of the things that my exes did. So what ends up happening is these boys, when they get older, they can't get women because the man that their mother tried to raise them to be is not the man that her herself would even be with. The type of men that a lot of times women try to raise their boys to be aren't the type of men that got them in the first place. Think about that. Think about that. When I first heard that, blew my mind. Absolutely blew my mind. And it made perfect sense. I was super beta. I was a big simp. And I'm just now <laughs> in my 30s coming out of that because I'm learning and I'm understanding from more masculine men, men that have figured it out, men that are doing it right. So now going back to the part on fear and how a lot of young boys and young men have fear of women. So like I said, my mom had this hierarchy of status within my family. I didn't have any male role model or father figure of any sort to kind of establish order within my home. So who was it that I was supposed to get this order from? My mother. So not only did I have this innate fear for women because I'm thinking that I'm supposed to do as women tell me to do because my mother, my aunts, it's only women around me and I have to do what they tell me to do. So in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, I have to do what a girl would tell me to do. I would have to ask a girl for anything before I can proceed to do anything. You know what I'm saying? So just in recent years, I had to learn that I wasn't supposed to ask a girl what she wanted to eat or where she wanted to go on the date. I supposed to figure that out. She's supposed to come along with what it is that I have going on. And it took me a long time to figure that out. I would always be baffled. I'm like, yo, how come this girl is being so difficult? No, it was me not playing in my role as the man. But I was used to being told by women what it was that we were going to be doing. So that's why I say it's so important for boys and girls, males and females, men and women, to have good, healthy, masculine role models, men in their life, to kind of show them and guide them in the directions to help them grow as better people. Some will even argue that the male's role, the husband's role, the man, the masculine man role is more important than the mother's role. Yes, the mother's nurturing, but the man, the husband can teach a boy how to be a man, how to be the man he needs to be in both society, his career path, and in the dating game. Now for a young girl, the father can teach her all those things also teach her how to be respected and cared for by a man. Because too often you also see a lot of women that are older that grew up without a father figure in their life, how they're out here and they're not moving in the best way. It might be a little loose. You might You see a lot of OnlyFan girls out here nowadays. I'm pretty sure if they had the right type of father figures in their life, they wouldn't be doing that. Not to say that some of them don't and they're not doing it, but they, come on now. Think about it. Really think about it. My daughter, whew, I wish she would. I wish she would. So adding to a fear that I personally had when it came to women and stuff that you're seeing coming up a lot today. So now there's a whole lot of talk on high value men, men earning a certain amount of money and women wanting those type of men and only those type of men. Now this is a talk that's very, very popular right now, but it's something that I have been aware of since I was a young, young boy and it affected me in a great deal. So. When I grew up, growing up, my mother was very independent. She was like, I don't need a man for nothing. If a man can't give me no money, then he's no good to me, at least. My mother was doing well financially for herself and for us at one point in her life. And then when she got sick, that stuff started to dwindle. Like all her resources were eaten up very, very fast. So then that's when she really relied on men to help provide for us. But mind you, my mother was so independent in her mindset which was very, very jaded and, and foolish because if she was so independent, she wouldn't have needed a man for his resources. She would have been able to acquire them for herself. 
entirely. Even though that's pretty much what she did for the, the first few years of my life, from zero to 10 or whatever it was. Um, well, not really zero, because we were homeless for a little bit. So as I got a little bit older, for a certain stretch of years, for about eight years or so, she was very independent. She can do it all herself. And then, like I said, she fell on hard times. I was a high school freshman year. She got sick. Then she really began to rely on men. So my mother would always, always say, if a man can't give me money, then the man is no good to me. So what did that tell me? What did that instill in my very young, impressionable mind that, okay, I wasn't enough as I was because I was poor. I didn't have money. We were struggling. So whenever I would go out and I would see a young lady that may catch my attention, I would have all these negative thoughts that were instilled in me by my mother about myself and about my situation. So it would cripple me to the point where I wouldn't even be able to go up to that girl and talk. And that was my life from the moment I started liking girls to the age of 28 years old when my mom passed away. And it still continued on till I was about 30, 31 years old. Now I'm 33. In the past couple of years, I've been able to, to pull myself out of that mind frame, that, that mindset. But at the same time, I didn't start to become somewhat successful until the age of 31, 32, 33 years old. So it's still in my head, and I'll tell people that as well. It's so hard for me to feel that I'm deserving or worthy of love because there's this voice that's constantly playing in the back of my head that's saying that you aren't, aren't enough as you are. You don't have enough. You don't have enough. So it will make a lot of young boys that grow into men have this this fear, this bottom line, this underlying fear of women because it's like, okay, you're looking to give your heart to someone, but you feel as though you aren't enough as you are for them to accept your heart. And another thing too that my mother would also say that had me feeling somewhat insecure as I grew up was she would say, it's perfectly acceptable for a woman to have some weight on her because women bear children and it's natural for them to put on weight in that process. But it's perfectly unacceptable for a man to have any weight on him at all. Men shouldn't have weight. There's no, there's no reason why a man shouldn't be in physical shape, in good physical shape. Men are supposed to be hard workers. If a man is fat, he's lazy. He's a bum. He's not working. He's doing blah, 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 blah. That's something my mother instilled in me when I was young. So now that I'm older, there's still that part of me that feel undeserving of the love that I want because I'm fat. <laughs> but even though I live in the real world and I can see couples of all sizes where Maybe the guy is big and the girl is small or the, the, the opposite. The girl is big and the guy is small, whatever it is. But it still doesn't change what has been programmed into my subconscious. My subconscious dictates how I move throughout life. Even though I'm consciously aware of things, my subconscious is the, is the driver of this boat, is the captain of this ship. So until we can do a better job of reprogramming some of the areas of our subconscious, we could potentially be stuck in the frame of mind and the mindset that we are currently in. But it takes work. Every single day, I am working to become a better version of me, to build my confidence so that I can have the things that I want and desire out of life. But you know where that started? With me studying successful men and successful women, but majority of successful men. That's why it's so important to have male role models in your life. When I first started on my journey of self-development, I started with like Ty Lopez. If you y'all, you've been on YouTube for a while, he used to have like the most popular running ad that was on that was popping up on everyone's videos of him in a garage with a Lamborghini behind him and a bunch of books on the bookshelf and he said I got that Lamborghini reading all those books 
So I was curious as to see what this man was talking about. Started with him and then I just kind of dove into that whole space of mindfulness, mindset, business, success, learning from all these different men from different walks of life, um, different type of careers and businesses that they were building or had created. And I just dove in and those became my mentors. Because one thing I also heard Ty Lopez said, he was like, if you don't have any immediate mentors or people around you in your circle, people that you've come across that are successful, you can always go to books, go to seminars. You can um, pick up videos on YouTube and watch those videos. So that's li I literally went down all those rabbit holes. I would go to seminars. I would go to webinars. Well, webinars at home in front of your own devices. I picked up books. Y'all see those books on the shelves up there? I've, I've read about half of those books. I got other books across the house scattered and in my car that I'm currently reading now. Um, what else did I do? Um, YouTube. YouTube was a big one for me. I would constantly let videos play in the background. And I still do to, the, to this day. When I'm working on these orders for you guys, when I'm getting this merchandise out to you guys, I'm playing one of their videos. I'm playing podcasts of these great minds in the background and I'm listening to it. Sometimes I'll even share some of the clips, put it on my Instagram. You'll see me shouting out people getting the merchandise, sharing clips from the podcast um, or all these different interviews or whatnot. But I say that to say that the dominant, but I say that to say that a positive masculine male role model or father figure in any child's life is a important one, a very, very important one. But man, there is so much more that I can say about the fear that men have for women and why they have it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be on the podcast tomorrow, Fresh and Fit Podcast. Y'all going to hear me say some stuff that y'all may or may not agree with. Y'all going to hear a lot of people in there say some stuff that y'all may or may not agree with. Y'all are going to hear us all generalize. You know what that means? We're going to stick to something very specific. And we're not going to divert from that very much, even though we know that there's a broader aspect of any given conversation or any given topic. And there's this other ways of thinking of it. That's what we do here in this Patreon on the second channel, a different perspective. But this podcast, we're going to generalize. Don't get mad. Don't get upset. Just go in with the open mindset. But anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope y'all enjoyed this video and here's the video from the other day. Enjoy. What's going on you guys and welcome back to a different perspective. Today we're about to have a very, very necessary conversation. I had one of my viewers send this video in to me. He really wanted me to check it out. I am a fan of this content creator. I done came across her stuff on YouTube, TikTok, all over the place. She does phenomenal work. She's a very understanding woman from what I can tell. This video right here is titled, This is Why Men Are Afraid of Women. Like I said, this is a conversational channel, so I'm about to be diving deep. I'm about to be giving a lot of different examples of what it is that she's talking about in this video. Y'all boys goes ready. I'm ready. Let's you go. know, I really fail to understand why some women can't see why men are afraid of women. Oh yeah, I said that. See, I haven't seen a bunch of these videos towards men. Why don't men understand why women are afraid of them? But I have not seen one female make a video being like, huh, here's where we're messing up. But don't worry, because whether you like it or not, that's what I'm here for. Men are afraid of women because right from little boys, they're taught that their sole purpose in life is to marry a woman and provide for her. But just so you know, if she decides to leave you, she can take everything that you earned. It's funny that she started with that because this has been something that's been on my mind a lot lately, a lot. And I've had some discussions, agreements and disagreements with a lot of different women over this topic. And not gonna lie, if anything has been scaring me as of lately in regards to women, it's this one thing. Because it does seem pretty unfair that, let's say, get into a relationship, marry this woman, something goes south we get a divorce now she has the rights or the potential opportunity to take half of everything that i have obtained even before the relationship doesn't sound fair does it and what's funny is a lot of the women that i speak to about it most of them 
make it seem as though, wait, no, that's right. That's completely fair. I should, I do deserve half of everything that you have. What? How does that sound? What's funny is when you ask the women, would it be okay if I took half of everything that you earn? They're completely against it. What sense does that make? Where's the equality in that? Women tend to fight for equality when it's beneficial to them only, really only. Because I'm thinking of it like this. What, 80% of divorces are filed by women? I think, what, maybe 50% of marriages end in divorce? So I'm already going into this situation with this 50-50 chance of us staying together and the likelihood of her being the one to divorce me is a lot higher than me divorcing her. Now I know some of you might think, well, you shouldn't even be going into a relationship with that type of mindset. You should be going in there with the thought of to death do us part, right? I agree. I agree with that entirely. But think about this. You'll be foolish to not protect yourself in the case of something going wrong. Prenups. Look, I've recently decided I probably won't ever get married. But in the case that I do, I'm going to have an attorney, a lawyer, a, a photographer, a videographer, whatever the heck I need present when we're writing that prenup. And I'm going to have people advising me, professionals advising me on what exactly I should be putting in this prenup. I know exactly what I want to be putting. You ain't, look, whatever you came in this with, you leaving with. I, I suggest that you earn your own keep, you earn your own money, even though I'm gonna be taking care of the bills, I suggest you earn your own money because something goes south, you ain't getting half of mine. I'm not about to pay for you if we're not in this relationship together. Doesn't sound fair to me, doesn't sound right. You wouldn't wanna pay for me, vice versa. I'm not gonna pay for you. But again, I know people are like, well, you're going in with the wrong idea, you're going in a relationship with the thoughts and possibilities that it could potentially end. Listen, no one gets car insurance hoping that one day they will get into a car accident. No one get health insurance hoping that one day they will get sick or fall ill to a life-changing disease. You get that stuff in case those things happen. Same thing with life partnership protect yourself and it goes both ways because there's many a cases where the woman was out earning the man now she's paying to take care of him outside of that relationship that they're no longer in because i'm looking at it like this if i get divorced and now i have to pay monthly for this woman's well-being because of the lifestyle i was able to provide for her during the time we were together it's gonna hurt me to get into a relationship with another woman because now I'm going in with far less than I had before. If I wanted to marry again. Let's have these conversations. Let's protect ourselves, both men and women. Including your children. Men are afraid of women because there are too many stories of a man calling the police because a woman has hurt him and the police either arrest him or tell him that he's lucky he didn't hurt her in the process of defending himself or else he'd end up in jail. I got some examples of that. One example um, happened to a friend of mine, buddy Jonathan I grew up with. I ran into him one day, hadn't seen him in years. We sat there, chatted up for a little while, got to see where he was at in his life and what he had going on. He told me that he had recently got out of jail where he was for about a year or two because his girlfriend or baby mother lied when they got into an argument, called the police, lied to the police, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and said that he put hands on her. At that time, when I met, when I came across Jonathan, it seemed like he was in good spirit. I think he was in a new relationship with someone else, but two things. This man had spent over a year in jail for something he did not do. And the second thing, he wasn't able to see his child. I could tell he was upset about that. Crying, 
crying upset about that. The woman wouldn't allow him to see his child. She put that type of restraining order on him. And he was very upset at the fact that he couldn't understand why she lied. It's like, I have not once ever put my hands on that woman. I would never do that. No matter how angry and upset I got, I would never put my hands on a woman. I can't understand why she lied. She lied to have a one-up on him. She lied so that she could feel like she was in control of the situation. Because during the argument, he probably had some very valid reasons for why he was upset. So she wanted to hurt him and she was willing to do whatever it took to do so. I got other stories of that too, but that's all, that's all the example you need. Men are afraid of women because women are predators too, and many of them prey on men knowing that society will let them get away with it. Mm -hmm. Men are afraid of women because there are too many stories of men playing with their children at the park and some Karen calling the police on them because they're convinced that that man is a pedophile and has stolen that child. Yes. Yes. I've heard about a case like this recently. It happens. It happens. Men are afraid of women because there's no birth control made available for men. So there are a lot of women that lie about being on birth control just to baby trap a man. Men are afraid of women because society has given women the choice that if they get pregnant, they can choose whether or not to follow through with it. But a man, he does not have that choice. And you can sit there. I've been pro woman when it comes to this matter. I'm always thinking, I'm like, you know what? It's your body, your choice. Simple as that. Your body, your choice but it does eliminate the fact that the man has no say so in it. It took both people for that pregnancy to occur in the first place. So both people, I feel, should be able to come to a mutual agreement. But at the end of the day, her body, her choice, right? And too often, are there women willing to trap a man because maybe a potential financial gain they can obtain off of having a child by him? You see it a lot in the entertainment um, industry. And say to me, well, he has to hold half the responsibility because he helped make that baby. But how come you don't hold that same argument when he's the one paying solely for that baby for 18 years? And her excuse is, well, I carried it. I'm the mother. Men are afraid of women because there are a lot of men that have been molested, sexually assaulted, and raped by women. But yet the rest of society tells them that there's no way that they can be a victim. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. You'll be surprised. You'll be surprised how many women pray after young boys. It's, 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 I know it's hard to say and hard to hear, but you will be surprised. I remember myself when I was young, I used to think it was going to be no problem for me to get women or girls when I was older because I always had grown women. I was talking about as young as five years old, had grown women saying things to me that they should not have been saying. Stuff like, oh man, if I was your age, I would be all over you, boy. Or, ooh, I wish you were older. I would hear it all the time. None of, the, none of them ever tried anything with me. But they would say it to me all the time. So I was like, boy, I'm going to be a player when I get older. But no. Instead, I became somewhat afraid of women for the longest. And I got another story to add, but let's finish this. But most of all, they're afraid of women because women tell them that their issues don't exist. Mmm, interesting. Very, very interesting. So, I remember when I first became afraid of women. Let me tell y'all this quick story, then I'd be out of your hair. I was in middle school. I was on the bus. It was some kids playing truth or dare or whatever. And I remember thinking, I'm like, yo, what? This is crazy. Like, I'm surprised this is happening right now. I don't want to get into the details. We're still talking about underage kids here. Uh, but I remember I got home that day and I was talking to my best friend at school. I remember the cat, it was, his name was Jeff. I was talking to him on the phone and I was telling him about the whole truth for dare thing that was going on on the school bus. And I was like, yo, man, look, next time I'm in there, I'm playing too. I'm not gonna be scared. I'm gonna jump in there, have a good time. You know what I'm saying? And he was rooting me on I was like, yo, Bro, I wish you rode my school bus, man. I wish you rode my school bus, man. We can do this, man. But 
And that's where confidence come from. The ability to cheer on and root for somebody that may not be able to do something in any given moment. I was confident that I was gonna have a good time in this next game of two for dare to the point where I probably would have been the one instigating, hey, two for dare, two for dare, let's play. But I'm being truthful and letting y'all know that this is something that happened back then when I was that age. So get off my back. So after I got done talking to my boy Jeff on the phone, a couple of hours had went by and my mother called me into the living room to have a conversation with her. And when I got there, she was like, I heard you on the phone with your friend. I was like, what? She was like, yeah, I was listening. I picked up the other phone. Kids, if you don't know, uh, I don't know if y'all still have these in your home, in your household, but you know, if you got a house phone, somebody can pick up the phone in another room and you can, they can hear your conversation. So that's what my mom did, invaded my privacy. She picked up the phone and listened to everything that I was saying on the phone with my boy Jeff, every word of it. And she told me something and it messed me up so bad that I was unable, incapable of talking to females for a very, very, very long time. Scared the heck out of me. So this is what she said. She said, I heard you talking to your friend on the phone and I heard you talking about what you said you're gonna do. This little game of truth or dare. She's like, boy, you can't trust these girls. You'll play that game and then next thing you know, they might be okay with it. Later on, they might feel like they were violated or something and then they can go to police and they can say that you graped them. I'm gonna use that word. Y'all know what I mean. They, they can say that you graped them or actually assaulted them. And I was like, what? She was like, yeah. And you could be put in jail for that. I was like, what? Are you serious? Why would they do that? They were they were playing the game too. That's, they, they, what, what, what? She was like, yeah. She was like, they can do that. They can change the story. And with me saying that, it's a lot like what she's saying here. It's a lot like what she's talking about here in this video. How they can manipulate certain things, how they can change certain things to be in their favor or when they're upset. And that screwed me up so bad. I had confidence, more confidence before that situation, before my mother told me that, then after, immediately after I went from okay, I thought I had an idea to, okay, now I don't know what to do at all. Because I was never told I didn't have a male role model or father figure in my life, none of that. All I had was my mother. And my mother told me what not to do, but she never told me <laughs> what to do. <laughs> so I didn't know how to be after that. I was so afraid to talk to girls. I was like, I don't understand where the line blurs between what's acceptable and appropriate and between what's unacceptable and inappropriate. I don't know. I don't know where to cross that line. I don't even know where they meet. I don't know what's okay and what's not okay. So I was like, all right, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm not saying nothing. I don't want nobody to say that I great them or actually assault it, none of that. I'm not doing it, I'm staying to myself. And that's how I went from the rest of middle school career all of high school and well into my 20s <laughs> that was me i was always on and then it also had to do with the fact that all this stuff that she was saying in here in this video all that stuff also was piling into it because i'm not only seeing or viewing or hearing about these different scary situations and scenarios and stuff that guys are dealing with but there's also other stuff in my own experiences that are piling onto adding more fear for the opposite sex. And one of which, which a lot of guys don't talk about, and unfortunately, a lot of young men and women are not aware of, is the relationship that they have with their mother. I'm gonna finish that conversation on my Patreon. So if you're not subscribed to me over there, make sure you check that out, Artie Kicks on Patreon. But yeah, thank you, brother, for sharing this one with me. This is definitely one I feel like we needed to have a conversation about. But well, y'all know what time it is. Like this reaction, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, stay tuned for more. As always, the link to the original will be down in the description box below. If you haven't already, make sure you follow your boy on the gram and Twitter at Artie Kicks. 
I will catch you guys in the next one.